Hey everyone, Magic Sword here, and we're back, at least for a little bit, because you know I love that pre-release season. So, yesterday I did like a very quick video, uh, quick to view, not to edit, about United and Stormwind, everything we know so far, and today is going to be a long-form video, which is to say long to view, short to edit, because I just love, just love video editing. And we're going to be talking in depth about the things that we saw in that reveal. So, starting us off, we're going to start with Battlegrounds. Uh, skip to the timestamp below if you don't want to do Battlegrounds stuff. So, Briny Bootlegger. Um, so, this card, presumably it's going to give a, um, a coin that's worth two, because it says gold coin, not just coin. Um, that's my guess, at least. Um, it's hard to say for sure. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, Briny Bootlegger at the end of your turn, if you have another pirate, add a gold coin to your hand, right? Because if that's just a regular coin, then it's a worse Warden of Old. Because, um, again, assuming that that four mana cost means it's a tier four minion. Um, so it's conditional Warden of Old. Like, yeah, Warden of Old has to die. But, like, most of the time, all your guys die. Especially, like, when you're, like, getting right on tier three when you would get Warden of Old. And, um... By the time you're going up to tier 4, you kind of want to start phasing out that Warden of Old anyway. Um, so, I don't know. I think this could be very good situationally because that extra gold income will really help you get to Eliza or even like Hogger faster, right? You can kind of like um, cheat up to your next uh, big like gold breakpoint, right? Um, for in terms of like tavern tiering. So that could be really good. It could really accelerate pirates to be um, to be those like high damage powerhouses that they should be um so that that's like a potentially really good win con for pirates i think um and then this one nosy leader again assuming this is a six drop uh because the six mana cost there every two turns add a random golden minion to your hand so my thing about nosy looter here is um i just don't that's like that's a really powerful effect obviously getting a golden minion in hand means you are getting a random golden minion, you're basically getting Yodora power every two turns, right? So it's a random golden minion, which is whatever, presumably capped by your tavern tier. Um, and, like, this this just feels like it's a, it's a kind of a weak minion to just have sitting on your board. Um, I guess if you're doing pirates, you just kind of need bodies. It almost doesn't matter. It's kind of like Murlocs, right? Um, I would still prefer pirates with effects. Also, we're getting 20 well, 23 more new cards, right? And a lot of them, they're emphasizing tribal synergy. So I'm a little concerned that this is just too slow. Maybe if you do, even if you do, like, let's say you do a normal curve up to five and then you get a triple like that turn, this would probably be a good take then because it's still like early enough in the game that you can be greedy with something like this. But outside of that, I'm a little concerned that it's just too slow because it's like, okay, so I have it on the board for two turns. then. So that this is on the board for two combats, and then on the third, like play phase, the placement phase, I get another golden. Like, okay, cool. Wow, thank you so much. Right, like it's it's really weak. If you're doing like let's say turn twelve and thirteen, you're just keeping this like weak ass nosy looter on the board. Not really, not really good. I don't think. So, general first impression is that maybe it's a little too slow at six, and probably way too fast at five. But again, that might um this might be one of those things because it's a totally novel effect just kind of hard to tell uh its exact power level without seeing it in action and that's true of like most of these um cards which is why i so enjoy pre-release content because we get to see how wrong we are right about our predictions so um still in battlegrounds news here uh skins so we get i believe it's called pyro spike millhouse which is cool and chained keldizod which is a uh, big deal for you warcraft nerds out there so i really like these skins i know i made like a joke about like oh yeah you get skins in a game mode where you can't pick your character consistently but like i imagine they're going to be cheap or bundled in with something like maybe the tavern pass right um and even as standalone purchases like they'll be cheap right so the thing about um, you have to, like, pick your heroes, though, right? They're never going to make a King Mukla skin. They're probably not going to make a uh, a Galakrond or Eudora skin, like those characters that are constantly changing how powerful they are, right? 
Keldus and Melhouse are very solved and they're very balanced. They are consistently good. They are like middle tier two. Milhouse is like higher if you play him well, right? Keldus is never bad. He's consistently like you will get fourth place with this hero, right? Because you just get so much early tempo from his hero power that it carries you into the mid game easily. So giving characters that are consistently at least okay skins is definitely the way they're gonna do this, right? Like um, I could like they probably won't give Guff a skin. First of all, he's new. Second of all, he desperately needs a nerf, right? Um, like he's the best guy right now, probably a bit over tuned, way over tuned, certainly. Um, a hero like that's not going to get a skin. Lord Barov, probably also not going to get a skin, right? It'll be somebody who's like more significant to Hearthstone's history. Um, right. Probably somebody who already has like obvious choices for alternate art there. Um, like Chain Keldus, like I said, is like very obviously related to, um, Warcraft. I, I did look it up. I'm just blanking on it because I'm. I've never played WoW, but <laughs> um, yeah, like I think that the, the skins are a really good idea. And of course, we can't forget the one that everyone's really excited about, which is the Ragnaros skin, right? So this is a bartender skin, which I've seen s people suggesting bartender skins basically since the mode came out. <laughs> um, so uh, unlike the previous hero skins, bartender's always there bartender um you, you know you see him every game he's gonna you maybe you get tired of bob saying he's rooting for you before you get your ass kicked right maybe you want ragnaros to say something about your enemies going up in flames i don't know right like this is a great idea and then um i would like to say that this is so they announced this bartender skin and then they also in case you missed it there's a bartender skin in the shop right now that's themed for the uh united installment expansion this is for the fire festival but the United and Stormwind expansion has a pre-purchase thing already, as well as some hero skins, right? So we already know, we already know that there uh, are more in the pipeline, right? Um, I don't know exactly how much a standalone skin should be worth for a hero. Um, we'll see how that shakes out. People will have very strong opinions no matter what, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, it looks like the... The Fire Festival, this is a nice little transition to the Fire Festival, is going to be kind of what we come to expect from it. We're going to get packs, we're going to get extra um, resources in general, probably. Um, lots of quests, new brawl, new skins. This is part of that skin, right? New, um, there's a Malfurion skin, right? I think I have that in here. Yep, yeah, new Malfurion skin, right? So we have all sorts of stuff like that. And overall, I think that this is going to be a very normal Fire Festival, right? I mean... Like I said, there wasn't a good joke about the festival itself. I had to tie it to real world events. So let's get into card reviews. Oh, everyone's favorite thing, card reviews. So the Pandaren Importer, two mana, one, three, battle cry, discovery spell that didn't start in your deck. Um, I really like this actually. Um, so on the one hand, if you're not pick, if you're not picking that spell for your deck, um, that probably means it's not as strong as the spells that are in your deck necessarily this is a discover that produces lower quality on average cards but the thing is cards that you don't run in your deck aren't necessarily weak all the time they're just weak most of the time right tech cards niche cards you don't want to run them in your deck because statistically they perform poorly so pandaren importer gives you the opportunity to pick up those niche cards that you left out of your deck so let's say you're running priest and you want to uh, pick up like a an extra well, not an extra, but you you were like, okay, power word infusion or feast, right? Those could be nice. Giving my guys like extra health and attack could be nice, but it really doesn't fit with the deck. It um, you know, it gets beaten out by things like apotheosis. But now Pandaren and Porter can get you that, right? Pandaren and Porter can get you those cards that would be nice sometimes if you're like ahead on board or whatever, help you finish out the game faster, but that you just don't want to run because they're not really good in and of themselves right so it'll help you with um more niche situations where you wouldn't want to pack the card anyway um like hunter's flare right like you don't want to run flare but uh okay anti-secret tech now i have it on a discover or potentially right um or oh man i ran out of resources let me use my pandaren importer to get um a spell that gives me like more resources right i'm playing an aggro deck i ran out of resources okay cool i generated some resources right Maybe not the best example. You probably want to run run this in an aggro deck, but um, you know, 
it it has a lot of weird play it'll definitely be good in arena it's i mean discover in general is just strong in arena right um but i'm really interested to see how this shakes out and if people end up running it i think um general consensus is that you want to instead of running a card that might discover a card you would want you would just want to run that card that's what my gut says but the nature of this card makes that almost um this makes it like the um the variety pack right of being able to get any given niche uh niche card instead of uh just running that one in its place so i'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out so spice bread baker this is a huge one um restore two health to your hero equal to the hand size right so this encourages hand play um specifically i think hand lock is what they had in mind when they printed this they demonstrated it on a warlock they uh gave warlock a self-damaging quest right this is which we'll talk about later this is a huge huge card um that will definitely be in that package i think if it's a good package it's unclear <laughs> so um hand lock is back in a really interesting way we'll talk about that later but this is a, this is a pretty normal card it reminds me of a ferocious howl where instead of gaining armor and drawing you just restore health and get a body right so it does two things that directly impact your hero or your hero slash the state of the game and then you get a body right instead of drawing a card right that's kind of like the uh, the trade-off here and this costs one mana more so yeah pretty uh pretty normal looking card all things considered so now we see heavy plate which is our first tradable card that they showed off tradable um, is a mechanic where it's described in the little tooltip you can drag that card into your deck to spend one mana and draw a new card so for the purposes of this um, you drag it into your deck you draw your next top deck and then you shuffle right so if for example you used pull kelt it would still be ordered when you draw that card and then it would be shuffled after that right um, that is i think there is even more to it than that but that's a good like base level understanding of how this will work uh, basically any card with tradable can be cycled back into your deck and that is huge <laughs> that that is absolutely monstrously huge i am a little afraid that we'll see tradable just on the wrong card and we'll be like oh no oh no 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 right um the we'll get to the uh rust sworn viper or whatever rust worth viper in a second but um i like heavy plate i think this is a good idea it reminds me of sh it's clearly reminiscent of shield block um where instead of gaining five and drawing a card you can gain eight or spend alternative mana and draw a card instead um so i like that idea uh it seems undertuned but again you pay for flexibility so that's kind of the idea there let's look at this one fire sale this is not undertuned this is not undertuned at all deal three to all minions and tradable uh reminds me of hellfire a lot i think that's intentional um i always thought volcanic potion was a little weak you know that's three mana deal two to everything this is four mana deal three and then also it's tradable so it has that extra flexibility so if you are um not running against aggro this time all right put the fire sale back in your deck you don't need it you're running against ramp druid put the fire cell back in your deck right so this is huge um or maybe you're doing the quest uh, get to the quest in a minute maybe you're doing the quest and you get that and you want that spell damage so you shuffle this back in right you're just like i already cast my fire spell i don't need this anymore so there are loads of situations where this flexibility is huge so rust rot viper is the card i made the joke about in the previous video uh destroy your opponent's weapon overwhelmingly um weapon removal is actually bad i this is a take from uh jay alexander that he posts fairly frequently um and it's not just because he plays rogue i swear it, it he's correct weapon removal is on average not good it's just that it's very good in matchups where the person relies on a weapon unfortunately that's not most matchups right so when you run that tech card and also you're not guaranteed to draw it in the matchup where you do face a weapon archetype right so um this sort of thing where you can cycle that back in in the matchup where you know you won't need it if you are fighting any non-martial class like any casting class you know you don't need this uh destroy your opponent's weapon thing yeah get rid of it um the thing the thing about that though 
is that they just released a whole new class of weapons too. Oh, it's not this one. So impatient shopkeep, just a normal, very normal. Three mana, three, three with rush. Treatable. Cool. Um, Rune Mithril Rod. Every class is going to get some sort of um, profession equipment, right? Some sort of tool, which is like a weapon, but not really. Um, it occupies the weapon slot, but it is not for bludgeoning your enemy's face. It is for some secondary effect. So I've, I always love this thing where they use the weapon slot for things that are clearly not supposed to be used as weapons. This, uh, the Bulwark of Azanoth, again, obviously it is a weapon. It's a 1-4 weapon. You can hit your opponent with it. That's not the point. The point is that you don't take damage, right? So, Rune Mithril Rod, 3 mana 0-2 weapon. After you draw 4 cards, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by 1. Lose 1 durability. So this idea of lose 1 durability is huge. Um, that, like, keeps these in check pretty hard. Uh, gives them a lot of levers to pull in terms of like how to adjust the effectiveness of these weapons, right? So what I'm concerned about is... Um, so this is great for Warlock. Warlock doesn't have anything competing with it. Uh, I think not so much for Paladin, right? So you'll notice that um, 3 mana 0, 2. Kind of hard, slightly harder condition to meet. Although for Warlock, not really, right? And especially with, again, Tamsin is encouraging you to damage yourself. So you're going to be tapping a lot. You're going to be backfiring, whatever. Um, so that's like our handlock. That's another handlock thing here. Um, and it's comparatively expensive for what it does. One mana zero three hand buff all minions in your hand by plus one plus one. For one mana, every time something loses divine shield in a you know, Paladin loves Divine Shield right now. Like you have the um Carousel Griffin, you have Libram of Hope, you have um Righteous Defender, right? You have a bunch of Divine Shield cards that are very good. The goody two shields, right? This is two shields. That's for one minion. You have two shields. That's two procs of this uh prismatic jewel kit, right? So the thing here is that Paladin likes weapons too. Warlock doesn't have any weapons. Maybe you want the scrying or whatever, man. That's not that useful. So uh, there's nothing to compete with that. So it has to be weaker. Comparatively, this is much stronger because it has to compete with weapons, right? Um, so this is something I've thought about and thought about and thought about. And I genuinely have no idea <laughs> if this will outcompete weapons. I want to say it might because if you play this on turn one, just like due to natural curves, like by turn three or two, or three or four, when you want to play another weapon, this might have gotten some use. Um, and the other thing is, like, you know, when you have a minion with Divine Shield, you effectively double the usefulness of buffs on that thing, right? Because you get to attack twice as much, right? If you give it plus one attack, you're basically giving it plus two, because it's guaranteed to survive a hit. So if you're running a Divine Shield synergy deck, your minions have Divine Shield, which means that they benefit more from buffs than minions that don't have Divine Shield. There's a lot to consider here, a lot of moving parts. Um, I think that this could be good when I think about, like, what... Paladin isn't, like, huge right now. They nerfed it pretty hard, um, so it might need something like this to come back to Tier 1. Uh, I don't know if we want to live in that world. <laughs> I was happy playing Paladin, but I know a lot of people weren't. So, it's very up in the air if this will be good, because we don't... It's It doesn't fit into an obvious current Paladin archetype, because there kind of isn't one. And I would add that, I guess, I guess you have like, um, Nazoth Paladin, right? So this would be kind of neat in that potentially, like the hand buffs and all that. Um, but that doesn't really have a divine shield package from what I can remember. It's been a while since I looked at it. So I don't know, this, ha this would have to fit in a totally unique archetype. I was thinking maybe it would fit into dude Paladin because there's that guy that like gives all your dudes divine shield. And there are lots of ways to like flood the board and give them all divine shield, right? So that's where my mind went. But uh, this is this is one of those things where we need to see the rest of the expansion before we can make a call on it. Peasant, so why not Paggle died? So start of your turn, draw a card. Um, one health. I mean, it has to be. It has to be a two one. You cannot make this a one three. Um, it's really easy to kill. Most people can. Most decks can kill this. Um, especially if, if you're going second, this does not survive, right? If you're going against Demon Hunter, this does not survive. If you're going against Rogue, Mage, this does not survive. If you're going against Shadow Priest, this does not survive. 
there are a lot of scenarios where this just does not live to the next turn. Um, but if it does, it's pretty strong, right? Um, it's like better not paggle, like I said. So I think this is just too inconsistent. I think it's too easy to kill. I don't think it'll see play. Uh, Mailbox Dancer, however, I think very good in Rogue, potentially good in Druid. Because Druid likes to be able to cheat things out early, especially ramp, right? Um, the reasoning behind Rogue, of course, is that a the current Rogue is a bit miracle-ish, uh, being able to give yourself coins. The thing about cards, these symmetrical effects, you want to play a deck that can take advantage of that effect better than your opponent, right? Griffin Rider didn't see play in Standard, but if it did, it would have been in a deck that takes advantage of Beast Synergy or like you can give Beast Rush or something like that, right? Um, or even charge, right? Like that would be crazy. Um, so you would want when you have symmetrical effects, you need to put them into a deck that can take advantage of them. Griffin didn't see play because nobody was like super into beast at that time. Uh, Mailbox Dancer, I think, will see play specifically in Rogue. It reminds me a bit of um the questing. Is it questing adventurer? The one that gives you a coin for playing a quest reminds me of that. Just being able to add a coin to your hand on two mana is huge because it helps often smooth out your curve, um, cheating something out. Like if you cheat a Jandis out a turn early or two turns early, if you're on coin already, right? Uh, there's a lot that rogue can do with this. Um, I was thinking maybe again, maybe Druid, but like this would be best in spell Druid. This is not a spell. It doesn't really work. So lots to consider there. Um, I think this will see some play though. And if if not in anything else, that probably in rogue. Uh, all right, so now we can talk about quest lines. So this is the new mechanic. They introduced a lot of new. This is the only new mechanic. There are a lot of new like themed cards, right? Um, like those weapons are technically not a new mechanic. They're just weapons with text on them, but they're clearly themed. Every class is going to get one. Uh, quest lines. Every class gets one of these. It's the legendary um spell for this expansion right so it's like a quest that starts in your hand and then uh, after you've beat the first part of it it gives you another follow-up quest and then a third follow-up quest and then that gives you your new guy your leveled up mercenary right so quest line cast a fire frost and arcane spell and i believe that is all three steps of the quest you just need to do it every time um first reward is draw a spell next rewards discover a spell right Third reward is beefed up, um, what's their name? Uh, Dawn Grasp, right? Battle Cry, for the rest of the game, you have spell damage plus three. So good. So this is a very powerful effect. Uh, unfortunately, it does not immediately impact the board, and I don't know if it's a win con. Um, I was thinking maybe you could do some sort of burn deck, but that's even harder for uh, Mage these days. Right. The one nice thing is that uh, based on the conditions of these quests, you're kind of doing that stuff anyway. The Fire, Frost, and Arcane, you just kind of tend to run all of those. Um, notably, this is kind of opposite. Remember, they seem to be trying to push like a Frost Mage. So this does not work with just Frost Mage. You need to run those other spell types, right? Um, so it's interesting that they would do that. Um, they seem to be kind of doing to mage what they tend to do to shaman they finally like solidified elemental shaman and now they're uh messing around with mage now that shaman's functional <laughs> so mage seems to not be able to settle on an identity uh we had spell mage we still kind of have spell mage um we were given pieces for a hero power mage we were given pieces for a frost mage we are now being given pieces for i guess it is still a spell mage right um this could be a small spell rather than a big spell mage though i'm thinking um you know you use an arcane spell to discover a fire and a frost right or you use one half of a ray of frost to complete the first quest and then the other half for the second quest right uh, there are lots of things you can do that make this easy to complete and the reward is very powerful dawn grasp arcanist dawn grasp is very powerful um and running it alongside um regular dawn grasp that could be powerful as well um because you know if you're running those frost spells right um you and you probably want some stall right so being able to just freeze everyone is uh potentially very powerful i don't know i'm just spitballing here 
So again, they seem to be jerking mage around a little bit here, which is whatever. I mean, we have to see what they release with the rest of it, but I have good faith in the quest line so far. The demon seed is the warlock quest line. So the first is take six damage, then seven, then eight. So you need to take a total of 21 damage, which is why I said that healing card is going to be so crucial, right? But you get a reward, which is deal three damage to the enemy hero and give yourself three health, right? So the reward is just automatic healing. That's pretty good, <laughs> right? So um, we unfortunately do not have a good shot of Tamsin here. Uh, but we do have the effect. The final effect is that any self-damage actually gets reflected onto your opponent. And that's huge. That's potentially game-winning, right? Um, and they have them... They have the Warlock here completing this on turn 9. Um, and that seems really early to me. <laughs> um, I mean, like... The, the, the Priest is clearly not running an actual deck. Um, they have light spawn, okay, and fairground fool. I mean, maybe that works out. Maybe aggro priest is the way, some sort of shadow aggro priest, right? Um, but I don't know. I don't know how reasonable it is to end up doing this, right? To end up actually like completing the quest this early. I just don't. I don't see that happening in a real game. Um. I don't know, it's hard to say in a vacuum, like, how much self-damage is there? It's not even a question of how much self-damage is there. I'm confident there's enough self-damage. I don't know if there's enough stabilization. That's the issue, is can you keep yourself at high enough health? Because they dealt, it looks like they dealt exactly 21 damage to themselves here. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't have too much faith in this, because, again, I feel like it, it'll come out pretty, pretty late in the game, generally. Uh, it's hard to say for sure. And of course, we have this other, and again, not a new mechanic, and but just a new like theme for cards to follow. The Spike Ridge Steed format of these mounts, right? Give a minion plus four plus seven and taunt when it dies, summon an Elec. So mounts have the effect of their card text, right? So this will summon a four seven with taunt. Ramming mount plus two plus two and immune while attacking. Summon a ram with those effects right basically give a minion that death rattle that's really powerful really really powerful um i think if if the class for each of these is running a board based deck it will run these easily i mean this is great for um hunter doesn't often run across too many ways to buff its minions and it always runs a board based deck i mean just imagine this with kolkar right you buff up your kolkar or your you play another cheap spell and play hyena, right? This is huge. This is absolutely incredible what they are doing here. Um, Dark Bishop Benedictus. Eh, I, uh, I've kind of gone back and forth on Benedictus here. Currently, I'm in the camp of who won't be that impactful. Um, if the spells in your deck are all shadow, enter shadow form, right? Um, so there's potential for a spellless priest here that just um basically beats people down like hunter um the shadow spells are pretty good uh you have shadow word death um the raised dead uh, there are a few there's like a four cost that's really good um spreading plague right um there are a lot of good shadow spells currently and i'm sure i'm sure there will be uh new good shadow spells as well so again this is kind of dependent on how powerful priests non shadow spells are right how much we like uh renew how much we like apotheosis those are two huge cards in current priest builds and i don't see them really going anywhere um it would be nice if they did i would greatly appreciate if priest switched to a an archetype that has a real win con other than like grinding out your opponent and generating a fourth apotheosis i think that would be very healthy for the game if priest played a deck that had counterplay so 
that's that's my take i want this to succeed so i think it will uh but realistically i don't i have my doubts about it and of course we have flight master dungar this is the last card that was revealed it was like a little quote-unquote surprise again um this is this is our free card that we have right now um people i know i made a comment about like oh i'm gonna get easy wins on ladder first of all i haven't gotten easy wins yet i'm a little annoyed uh please just concede when you see me and that was mostly not a comment on the strength of the card, but a comment on the fact that people love to just like jam a shiny new legendary in their deck that it doesn't really belong in <laughs> so um dungar's cool i really like the effect actually um being able to choose how long a minion goes dormant is huge. It's huge. Um, because it's like, oh, well, shit. I really want that four-turn effect, but I need the body in the turn, right? Like, I need to have some sort of board presence, right? Or, um, you know, did I put the effects in here? I didn't. So, um, I think this is a really interesting way to play around with dormant um, so far most dormant cards i think all dormant cards in constructed have been for two turns including my ev right um so really cool that we just get this like flight path thing where we get to choose how long a choose how long it goes dormant and b get a proportionately powerful effect on it you get this um like the imprisoned um the imprisoned demon anton aton whatever effect on the uh, on the four and um again proportionately weaker for the staying dormant for one staying dormant for one turn is really interesting to me because it's almost like a sigil at that point right uh remember sigils remember that um cool new mechanic that demon hunter got instead of secrets i uh i'm sure we'll see more sigils coming up i hope they're better <laughs> frankly they um they're weak sigils are too weak but that's a different topic so that is everything that we saw in United in Stormwind. If you want to see more of this long form rambling content, um, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to see more of those, like in a minute things, I really enjoyed doing that. Was fun editing, that was legitimately fun editing, like gathering the clips and stuff. I will gladly do that again. Um, piecing that together, being snarky to Blizzard, of course. Uh, it's all meant with love. Um, any jokes about priest any jokes at the expense of uh the devs of course i know that they have a very difficult job <laughs> so you know i i do not uh and i certainly know that i could not do a better job <laughs> so all that said go ahead and like comment subscribe and we'll see when our next new content dump is for this expansion